I had a baby, and I gained a bunch of weight, but she's almost five months old now, and I still look heavily pregnant. Hmm, I wonder why. And I weigh... Oh my god, I can't even look at these numbers. But fear not, the savior is near. I can almost see it. It is. It is. Adele? Hi, I'm Looney, and for the next two weeks I will try to follow the third food diet. The diet Adele claims is responsible for her amazing weight loss. Here's the thing. Besides Adele, Surfwood has a whole bunch of celebrity followers, from supermodels to Olympic gold medalists. I've even seen claims that Meghan Markle and Prince Harry are fans, and that Harry lost weight thanks to this new miracle diet. Note that besides Meghan, they are all European, so perhaps it hasn't reached this side of the pond yet. This diet is probably popular with celebrities because it allows and even promotes red wine and dark chocolate. Unfortunately, I am weird and not a fan of red wine or dark chocolate. Surf food diet is a fairly new diet developed by these two guys, and apparently they know what they're doing. The problem is that since it's so new, there really is no scientific research or studies to back it up, other than the experiments they ran in this posh gym in London called KX. The test group was completed by 39 members of KX. The reason why they used mostly fit people was because usually diets show the results for severely overweight and unhealthy people, and it's a lot easier to lose weight when you have a lot to lose. They wanted to show that if these healthy fit people could lose the weight, then that's just the tip of the iceberg lettuce and potential for the overweight people is even higher. They also reported not feeling hungry, having more energy, sharper mind, higher well-being and looking better. Oh, I am really looking forward to that. Wait, what? The first phase restricts you to 1000 calories per day? I am not looking forward to that. So what is this hype diet all about? It's all about eating cert foods, foods that are high in sertraline activators. Sertraline is a type of protein that protects the cells from dying or becoming inflamed through illness. So this diet is supposed to boost your immune system, stop you from getting sick and make you live longer. All this is supposed to activate your skinny gene and mimic the effects of exercise and hardcore dieting without actually having to do it. In other words, they make you skinny and pretty. If you want to learn more about the science behind it, I'll put the link down below. This is not a science channel. I'm just a guinea pig, okay? There are 20 main cert foods and combining them apparently makes them extra super powerful. Buckwheat, this is going to be the main substance of your diet because everything else is just like add-ons in my eyes. Tonight we are having some red onions with parsley and olive oil and turmeric and walnuts. Looking at this list, I will not be doing the chilies. I cannot do spicy foods. Also, no capers. Yeah. The diet is made up of three phases. The first week is the one that claims a fat loss of 7 pounds and it restricts you to 1000 calories for the first three days and 1500 calories for the last four days. During the first three days you will have three green juices made out of the third foods and one third food meal. The fourth to seventh day you will have two green juices and two meals. This kickstarter phase of one week is optional. If you don't need or don't want a fast radical weight loss, you can just skip it. The second phase is called the maintenance phase. It lasts for two weeks. There is no calorie restriction. You will have one green juice, three balanced third food rich meals and one or two optional third food bite snacks. The third phase is basically forever and the idea is just to eat as many third foods as you can with your regular diet. Their slogan seems to be that it's the diet of inclusion, not exclusion. It's all about including the good stuff. In fact, they say that cert food was created as an antidote to the regular diet. Hang on a minute. An antidote. Oh, don't forget to subscribe for more buffoonery and gently fondle your like buttons. Okay, you guys can go now. Well, I don't know about you guys, but to me an antidote to a regular diet would mean I can eat absolutely anything I want.
as much as I want. I looked over their whole cookbook and nowhere does it say just have this green goop and you're fine to eat pizza and donuts for the rest of the day. No sir, it is all disgustingly healthy. What they probably mean is that you don't exclude any groups of food such as carbs and instead you eat a regular healthy balanced diet just with a bunch of surd foods thrown in. I am not planning to do any exercise during my experiment, it's all about the diet. Wait, what's that? Followers of the surf food diet are encouraged to engage in moderate activity for 35 minutes, five times a week. <sighs> I'm going to test this diet for two weeks. So the phase one and the first week of the phase two. Ah! <sighs> to see <laughs> if there is any difference. This is all I bought for week one of my brave experiment. On the left is everything you need for the green juice. On the right is most of the stuff needed for the meals. I'm just missing the chicken and salmon because I am lazy and I forgot to take them out. And I am missing chilies and capers because nope. And I'm also missing endives and miso paste because I couldn't find them anywhere. I have the dark chocolate, it has to be at least 85% cocoa, and I got 100% because I'm just wild like that. Just look at this skinny bag of green matcha. That was 20 bucks, you think you get a whole truckload for that? Red wine should ideally be Pinot Noir, because it has the most thingamies you need for the certain thingies. Buckwheat that I got from European store. Yep, that's it. Okay, let's make this green juice first. I'm up since 5 a.m. and it's 8 a.m. now, so I am absolutely starving. The recipe for the green juice is two large handfuls of kale, one large handful of arugula, one small handful of parsley, two to three stalks of celery, half a green apple, juice of half a lemon, one inch of chopped ginger, and a half a spoonful of green matcha. They say that you actually need the juicer, Nutribullet is not the same, but you know I am stingy and I don't want to get it, so you gotta do what you gotta do. I need to strain out all the pulp, because for some reason all this extra fiber hinders the absorption of all the good stuff. Actually, I woke up with a sore throat, runny nose and chills, which is annoying because it means I won't be able to tell if I'm having any side effects to this diet or if it's just me being sick. But I already had all my groceries ready to go, so I'm not going to wait. Whew, so this was a lot of work. And finally, we just got one big glass. Okay, taste test. Ooh! Green grass, a hint of manure, with a strong aftertaste of forecoming misery. Yep, definitely can taste the misery. <coughs> Honestly, if you take that collecting bag of your lawnmower and you lick the insides, I can imagine this is exactly what it would taste like. It's uh, bitter and sour and um, generally one of the most disgusting things I have ever tasted in my life. After downing the juice, I was still starving. Since the preparation is the key to your success in life, I decided to juice a larger batch. And I am not freaking kidding. It took me a solid three to four hours. After what I now have about six glasses of juice in this pot that will last me two days yep gotta do it all again in two days and i'm already out of groceries which means i need to go to get more kale and stuff now too after the juicing everything on my table was green my hands were green my floor was green my eyeballs were green my soul was green I put a warning sign on the juice to scare off the rest of the family so they wouldn't accidentally drink it Pfft, as if anyone would accidentally want to taste this. For our one and only dinner tonight, we are having a mole. 
Who knew a mole was high in protein? All right, off to find the mole. Search, dig. Mole, get the mole girl, get the mole. We couldn't find the mole. So for dinner, we're having sesame roasted miso glazed tofu, except tofu is chicken, and I have no miso paste, so it's just chicken, with some kale, zucchini, onion, turmeric, buckwheat, garlic, parsley, and olive oil. It was actually pretty good. But I was also so hungry by then that the dog's food bowl was starting to look good. It is day three. I didn't film yesterday because I was so sick and my sinuses are still blocked. You know what is not fun? Cooking for a whole family that is not on a diet with you. And their breakfast is pancakes and eggs and bacon and toast. And your breakfast is a glass of alien piss. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yesterday I had kale and red onion dal with red lentils, which I luckily couldn't taste uh, due to my head cold. Luckily because I do not like lentils. And today I am having a baked salmon with greens. I already ran out of parsley, but even though I still hold the Guinness World Record for killing the most plants by just looking at them, somehow this fine specimen of flat-leaf parsley has survived. Today is day four and I am so happy I can finally start having two meals a day. Today for breakfast I was supposed to have surf food muesli, but it asked for things like buckwheat flakes and buckwheat puffs and I could only find them online for like $30 a box each. So hell no. So instead I decided to just eat some good old plain buckwheat aside with some strawberries, chopped walnuts and dates. For dinner I had a buckwheat and strawberry tabula. Okay guys, so there was a slight setback in filming. Yesterday we were hit by Hurricane Sally. And we lost power for most of the day. And somehow I managed to make a third food salad out of all the coal stuff. A couple of days ago I had the worst brain fog ever and I was just about to point the finger at this diet book that claims that you will have such amazing mental clarity and focus. But then I remembered that I am a walking barometer and every time that a big storm comes to the gulf my head would be banging away normally. So I take my finger pointing back and even though I had fuzzy brain I had tons of energy which is really weird. It is the first day of week two and now I can have a bit more of a normal life with free meal Isn't that wonderful? and only one green juice a day. You know I got so used to eating so little that having three meals a day feels like I'm pigging out a bit. For breakfast I had this third food smoothie made of strawberries, kale, Greek yogurt, walnuts and chocolate. It's pretty thick, but it says you could add some almond milk to make it thinner. It tastes remarkably better than the green juice. See, why couldn't we have this three times a day for the first week? In second week, you can start drinking red wine. The first week you can only cook with it. So I guess I have to take one for the team. Ugh. Let me introduce you to tiny balls of heaven the third food bites these are so good so technically you can have three meals a day plus the green juice plus these little bites so that's a lot of food you will not get hungry past week one okay i will go onward with my less torturous second week of my little experiments and i don't want this video to drag on forever and ever so i will just see you at the end it's time to look at the results but before, a quick disclaimer. I know a lot of you cheeky buggers have skipped to this point just to see the before and after results. 
I can see you in my statistics. But if you feel inspired at all and actually plan to try this diet, please, please go and watch the whole video from the beginning. And if you are one of the few that actually watched the whole video, thank you so much. It really helps me more than you know. Back to the before and after results. In total, I lost four and a half inches of my waist, two inches of my hips, and one inch of the thighs. And guys, remember, this is the results for two weeks with zero exercise. And the scale says I have lost 14 and a half pounds. Woohoo! To be honest, I lost eight pounds in the first three days. I weighed myself on the morning of the fourth day and I was more than eight pounds lighter. So that will be your immediate water weight, I assume. After the first three days, the weight loss has been quite steady and slow. Once I got to the second stage, the second week, and could have three meals a day, I lost that morning skinny, non-bloated feeling. There was still clearly some weight loss, but it would be like half a pound or less per day. I feel like I still have lots of pounds to lose to get my old body back, but I think 14 and a half pounds and 4 inches of my waistline in 2 weeks is pretty damn good. The book itself promises 7 pounds during the first week and I lost 10, so 8 pounds in the first 3 days and 2 more in the following 4 and then the remaining 4 and a half during the second week. So yeah, the book says you would lose 7 pounds in the first week and 1 pound each following week. And I lost 10 pounds the first week and 4.5 pounds the second week. Remember that I was really overweight and there's always more to lose then. If you're already skinnier than that and you eat healthy anyway, your results probably will not be this drastic. Now let's talk about the positives and negatives and why I do or do not recommend this diet. When I first started this diet, I thought there is no way I will ever recommend it. First of all, I completely disagree with their claim in the book that everything you need is really easy to find and really easy to work into your daily life. There were many things that I either could not find or I had to order them online or I had to chase them around the town in specific stores. For example, their recipes require buckwheat, buckwheat flour, buckwheat puffs, buckwheat flakes. You can see what I mean? Guess what they sell in Walmart? Buckwheat nothing. Unless you live in a big city, or in California or somewhere like that where they have a bulletproof vegan superfood store in every single corner, you will need to go out of your way to get these ingredients. And remember that I work from home online. I think it would be a serious pain in the rectum if I had to work or study somewhere else and eat away from home. If you're on a keto diet or vegan or whatnot, then you can find the restaurant that caters for that. Good luck with this one. Uh, yeah, I'll have some uh, buckwheat with endives and parsley. Oh, and smack some turmeric on it, will you? Also, this diet is not wallet friendly. The juicing itself creates a lot of waste because you're throwing away the bulk. And to get all the ingredients is not cheap. Especially if you have a family and you have to buy a separate food for them. Unless you normally just cook for yourself or live with somebody who's willing to go on a diet with you. You will spend a whole day cooking and it's really annoying to cook delicious, calorie-rich, carby food for everyone else while you're starving. People are obsessed with the fact that it allows you to have red wine and chocolate. Well, I hate to break it to you, but it's not unlimited amount of red wine than any kind of chocolate all day, any day. It allows you to have like three small glasses three times a week and a little bit of unsweetened 85% dark chocolate that basically tastes like candle wax. Guess what? I bet you could eat any healthy diet, cut out all the sugary stuff in a junk food, and you could still have your little bit of red wine and your square of wax chocolate and it wouldn't make you any fatter. On the plus side, the results, especially the very first week ones, are really good. I mean, let's be honest, I did not think that going from Michelin man body to Arnold in seven days was possible. For me, 
So I would recommend this diet if, say, you have an event coming up, like a wedding or a class reunion, um, and you want to make sure that you A, fit into your clothes, and B, want to make everyone's jaws drop, then yeah, go ahead and suffer through the week. The other good thing about the diet was that I did have a lot more energy and maybe a little bit less of brain fog, but I don't know if it was because of the third foods or because I just cut out so many sugars and carbs. Maybe I would have had the same results with any veggie protein combo and portion control. The absolute best part about this diet for me and the reason why I'm really happy <laughs> I did this is the fact that I got out of my comfort zone in the kitchen and I tried so many new recipes and so many new ingredients. I guess it is sustainable in a sense that the first calorie restricting phase of the diet is optional and even if you do it, you will go back to the free meals a day later. So I guess it's possible, but I think that you would get pretty bored really quickly with how everything will be tasting exactly the same. If your goal is just weight loss in long term, I would say there's no point in squeezing these third foods in every day. You can get the same results by just eating regular healthy balanced diet and not overeating. If your goal is better focus and more energy, then just cutting out sugar may have the same effect. If your goal is longevity, I don't know, I guess if Adele lives to be 130, then we can say for sure that this stuff really works. I hope you enjoyed this little project. If you have any questions at all about this diet, feel free to drop them in the comments. I will leave the link for the book in the comments. This is not an affiliate link. If you want to find out more info about the diet or find any of the recipes, it will be there. Thank you for watching. Take care and stay safe.